What is your name, please? My name is Fred Lawton. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Lawton. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Lawton. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Fred Lawton and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Robert Sterling. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. Bob, it certainly won't be amiss for me to say on behalf of the panel and myself, it's real nice to have you here with us tonight. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Hope you have enjoyed our show at home and that you'll Indeed. enjoy it even more here. Wonderful, thank you. Good. Now, these three gentlemen, as you just heard, all claim to be Fred Lawton. Only one, of course, is the real Fred Lawton. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, Fred Lawton, am director of marine safety for the Raytheon Manufacturing Company. I am perhaps better known as a professional racing skipper and yachtsman. I have skippered such famous racing yachts as Bolero, Figaro, and Vim. Most recently, however, I was the sailing master aboard the American 12-meter sloop Columbia, which defeated the British yacht Scepter in the 17th challenge match for the famous America's Cup off Newport, Rhode Island. Signed, Fred Lawton. <laughs> so, panel, to start us off tonight, you just heard these three gentlemen all claim to be the Captain Fred Lawton, who was the sailing master of the yacht Columbia. Now, only the real Captain Lawton, of course, is required to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question, as usual, until you hear this signal. And at the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to cast your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Captain Lawton. And we'll begin our first round tonight with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, what was the uh, year of the first America's Cup? 1851. Number two, has the cup got a bottom? No. Uh, number, you can't drink out of it, in other words. No, ma'am. Number three, uh, what was the name of Sir Thomas Lipton's yacht? Uh, Shamrock. He had five of them. Number one, what was the name of Sir Thomas Lipton's yacht? Shamrock, one, two, three, four. He had five of them? Something <laughs> happened. Number one, uh, I mean, number two, uh, where's the leeward? Away from the wind or the lee side of the boat. And when there's no wind? There's no leeward. <laughs> you got nothing. When there's no wind, there's no leeward. That's number right. three, how Wrong. much... Huh? How much uh, margin in time, by what margin did the uh, Columbia win? The average was about seven minutes. Number one, what, oh, I must find out the name of the, no. I got it. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. Number one, uh, what was the age limit of the, of the deck members, the crew of, of uh, the scepter? There is no age limit. Was there any age limit on the British ship, number two? No. Number three? Uh, yes, they didn't want men over 30. Uh-huh. Number uh, one, who was the famous owner of the yacht Chanticleer? Thomas Evans. Number three, would you know? Thomas uh -huh. Evans. Number two? I think it's Evan Ruth. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, uh, there was some controversy about the hull of, of the, the scepter. Uh, who, who, who was it who built it or designed the scepter? Scepter was designed by David Boyd. Uh huh. Number one, uh, uh, what is a fathom meter? A fathom meter is an electrical instrument to show how deep the water is. Uh huh. In fathoms, I assume. Polly? Number one, how many feet in a fathom? About six and one eighth. Six and one eighth. Number two, uh, what are knees? Knees are parts of a vessel's construction. Uh, number three, what are knees? Parts of the vessel construction. Number one, is the 12 meter sloop 12 meters long? No, ma'am. Is it 12 meters wide? No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, how many meters 
this is a 12 meter sloop. I don't know. Number three, could you tell me how many meters a 12 meter sloop would be? A 12 meter sloop is about 70 feet. If uh, you'll divide that by 39 inches, you'll find out. <laughs> Why you're doing that, Polly? Uh, what were the figures once more? 32 <laughs> inches divide into 70 what? 39 inches. The exact length of our boat was 69 feet 7 inches. Well, there you are. Why are you doing that? We'll go along to Bob Sterling, Bob. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile back at the sloop there. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, in the trial races against Vim, who handled the helm most of the time? In the trial races, most back to handle the helm. Uh, number two, who handled the helm most of the time? Uh, in the Vim, against Vim. Against Vim? Yes. Uh, Briggs Cunningham. Number three, who handled the helm most of the time against Vim in the trial races? Uh, Briggs Cunningham, uh, Corny Shield started a couple of races. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that's as far as we can go in this first round. I only got battle. one. I only got one question. I know. Uh, what you asked three times. Right, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> well, there you are. Over. Well, we'll do better next time. Maybe <laughs> we hope so, Bob. Anyway, but it's time to vote right now. And without consultation, would you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, of course, you will select number one, number two, or number three. Team of challenges, of course, as always, will receive two hundred and fifty dollars for every incorrect vote. So let's find out how our voting goes. Panel, have you voted? You have, Polly? For whom? Well, I voted for number three, though 32 and 69 only goes two, and I don't think that the thing was two feet long. No, no. 32 inches into so many feet. Well, I You have to multiply the that. number of feet by 12 and... Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute, please. No, I'd like I... to do that again. What was that again? Now? Yes. Oh, 69 feet. Tell us the answer later. Bob, and what was your vote? And the 69 goes <laughs> four times. Right, I voted for number three and because six. of uh, his answer. Nine. Uh, who was the helmsman? And Corny Shields. Huh? Kitty, what about your vote? I voted for number two. He's got the wrong color. His face isn't the right color for the fellow that did the thing. But on the other hand, he knew who was the designer of the scepter, Mr. Boyd. I like that one statement. His face wasn't the right color for the fella that did the thing. I'm like Casey Stengel. I voted for two also because of, of uh, knowing a designer. And secondly, uh, Ralph Ebenrood is the, is the owner of the Chanticleer. And I think anybody who sails any, any boat, I think, would probably know that, although I'm probably and wrong. Eight from 32 and okay. 8 28. Yes, Polly. <laughs> yes, well, I'll, uh... Wait a minute. No, I uh, almost have it now. I'm yes. afraid we'll have to go on, Polly. You tell uh, us later. No, I stick with number three. It, yeah. worked <laughs> it worked out okay. Yes. All right. There we have it. Now, the way we voted, how did you vote? Want one. to find out whether you're right or wrong? So do I. So let's discover right now which one of these three gentlemen was the uh, real skipper of the Columbia in their recent races, defending successfully the America's Cup. So will the real Captain Fred Lawton please stand up. Well, now let's see. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Daniel Brenner of Brenner & Lewis. I'm a real estate broker. Well, he's happier in acres than in meters. Number three, what about you, sir? My name is Bill Corwin. I'm the principal owner and president of the Scarsdale Butt Company. Oh. <laughs> Bob, I think you had to... Hello, folks. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Uh, Did you I... skip her under, a, under an umbrella, Mr. Boyd? Mr. Lawton? No, ma'am. No. Well, I he doesn't have a tan. Well, he can get one anytime he wants it. <laughs> I think number one and three were beautiful liars. Yeah, they sure were. <laughs> and you did well in your guessing the first time. Let's see how well you do in the next one. But right now, let's discover what our score is. We had one, two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Thank you very much, gentlemen. On your way out, will you stop and pick up your carton of Marlboros? One for each of you. Good night and good luck. Good sailing. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is True Bowen. What is your name, please? My name is True Bowen. 
What is your name, please? My name is True Bowen. We have another affidavit for you, panel. Will you please follow along with your copies of this one? I, True Bowen, am a child musical prodigy turned bullfight critic. I appeared on the concert stage and performed on radio at the age of four. In 1951, I went to Mexico to study. I became interested in bullfighting and for five and a half years have been the bullfight critic for the Mexico City News. I am the first American and the first woman to ever hold such a job. I recently returned from Spain where I covered Spanish bullfights for my paper. Signed, True Bowen. Now you've heard three ladies all claim to be the same person, this time namely True Bowen, bullfight critic. And we'll start this course examination with our guest tonight, Bob Sterling. Bob? Uh, True Bowen, number one, is Juan Portigo still one of the leading matadors in Mexico? He is one of the leading matadors, yes. Uh, number two, is Juan Portigo still one of the leading matadors in Mexico? No, he isn't. Number three, is Juan Portigo still one of the leading matadors in Mexico? No, he isn't. He isn't. Uh, well, uh, number one, you're a bullfight critic. Uh, who is uh, Pablo Casales? Pablo Casals. Casals, I'm sorry. He's one of the leading Spanish cellists, I'm afraid he's not in the bullfighting field. Uh, number two, uh, you're a bullfight critic. Who is Pablo Casals? The world's greatest cellist. Mm -hmm. And number three, what is your answer to this? He is the Spanish cellist and considered the world's greatest cellist. I see. Kitty? Number one, what was your instrument? I played the cello and the piano. The cello and the piano. And the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, uh, in, in the Broadway theater, the critics murder the actors, and in the bull ring, the, the bull murders the actors. <laughs> What's left for you to do as a critic? Uh, I suppose write up the best report of the death. <laughs> That's a very good answer. Um, and number one, who is Arusa? I mean, number three. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Who is Arusa? Arusa is a regionador now. He used to be a matador, uh -huh. but he's retired. Number one, when, when you fight a very good fight, you get the ears. And then when you fight a super fight, what do you get? Well, you get both ears and the tail. That's the best. The tail, too. And the tail. I don't agree with that. I think the best is what's in between. That's what I like. <laughs> how about you, Hi? Number one, uh, uh, who and, and how is my friend Pepe Romero? Pepe Romero is perfectly fine, gossiping around. <laughs> uh, uh, who is Pepe Romero, number three? I'm sorry, I thought it was two. Uh, <laughs> Pepe Romero is a um, gossip columnist on Novedades in Mexico City. Uh huh. Number two, do you know who he is? He's the gossip columnist on the news in Mexico City. Number two, how recently did he become the father of a little boy? Uh, about uh, two years ago. Uh-huh. Polly? Um, gee, they all know so much. Uh, <laughs> number, uh, number one, what job did, Barn uh, did um, Barnaby Conrad hold while he was bullfighting? Uh, while he was bullfighting? Yes. Well, he was more of a, uh, uh, picador, in other words... No, I mean, what, what was his steady job? Oh, his steady job is critic, actually. He is a critic. Uh, number two, when he first started, what was his steady job when he was uh, also sort of an amateur bullfighter? Well, I think he had something to do with the United States government in Spain. Number three, could you tell me uh, uh, what is um, the difference between Portuguese bullfighting and Spanish bullfighting? Uh, in Portugal, they do not allow the bull to be killed. Number... That's it, panel. No I once again to vote, and without consultation, will you please mark your ballot as you did before, selecting number one. Number two, or number three? Oh, this is taking some thought on the part of our panel. Polly, have you marked yours yet? All set? For whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number two. Um, Barney was in, the, was in the diplomatic service, so she, when she said he was with the government, that was true. Number three uh, is a great liar or the real person. <laughs> <laughs> The accent was beautiful, and, and uh, she really knew what she was talking about. So she either is a is a, a real bullfight watcher, whatever that word is, which I can never pronounce, or she's or I'll aficionado. Sorry, <laughs> I the wrong one. 
I voted for number one, but I'm I'm guessing. I think they're all wonderful. Kitty, your vote? I voted for number three on the basis of Clive's obstruction. You couldn't, honey, because you had number two. Number two, I mean. On the basis of Clive's question about the birth of this small child whose father I never heard of. Oh, honey, he doesn't have any children. Oh, no! Hi, Gardner. Well, yes, he does, and, and he uh -huh. named one of them high. Uh, this was the this was the baby before the baby before the present baby. <laughs> right. Furthermore, I think it's that that if, if blondes are popular anywhere in the world, uh, they're more popular in, in Mexico City even than Vegas. So I voted for number two. All right, you have heard the way our panel votes, and you've also heard by way of reasons a lot of bull. And so let's find out now <laughs> which one of these ladies is the real bullfight critic in Mexico. So with the real true Bowen. Please stand up. Well, I must say you did well on that one, panel. Extremely well. Let's find out about the others now. Number one, uh, what do you really do? And what is your name? My name is Barbara Deming, and I'm a bilingual secretary with the Overseas Division of the Continental Can Company. <laughs> And number three, what about Mine's you? shorter. <laughs> my name is Marguerite Post, and I'm working for my master's at Columbia University. <laughs> I bet she majors in Spanish. What did you say, Bolly? I said, I bet she majors in Spanish. <laughs> I bet no. they all do, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah. They sounded so good. Well, when you double-check this time, you find that our panel did real well. Three uh, correct votes and only one incorrect, ladies. That means there's a total of $250 for you. But on your way out, stop and pick up a carton of Marlboro's for each. Thanks for being with us. Hope you had fun. We Thank certainly you enjoyed having much. you Thank here. You good night. Good night. Happy good night. And now may we have our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is James M. Herman. What is your name, please? My name is James M. Herman. What is your name, please? My name is James M. Herman. Again, I will read an affidavit. Please follow with your copies, panel. I, James M. Herman, live with my wife and children in Seaford, Long Island, New York. On February 3rd of this year, strange things started to happen in our house. Without apparent cause, bottles began blowing their tops. Statuettes took off and flew through the air, and heavy furniture toppled and crashed to the floor. These phenomena continued for about five weeks and were investigated by the police and by technical experts and scientists from Duke University. To date, no satisfactory explanation has been forthcoming. Our story received nationwide press and television coverage, and on October 29th, it will be the subject of a full-hour dramatization on the CBS television network entitled The House of Flying Objects. Signed, James M. Herman. <laughs> Three gentlemen this time, panel, all claiming to be the owner of The House of Flying Objects, one James M. Herman. We start with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, what was the first piece of furniture to start... Uh, fooling around uh, okay. in his son's room. Bookcase. A bookcase. Uh, number three, how many floors in your house? It's a ranch type house. One floor. Only one floor? One floor. Bedrooms in the back, living room, kitchen, and so forth. I see. Back. Number two, how many floors in your house? Two floors. Uh, uh, number one, how many floors in the house? One floor. Uh, is there a basement in the house, number two? Yes. I mean, a usable basement. Yes. Uh, number three, what incidents happened in the basement? Uh, well, that's when the big, that's where the big bookcase went over. The big bo bookcase went over? a bookcase full of books, and uh, uh, the walls came tumbling down, and so forth and so on. I see. Number Bob Sterling. Uh, number one, uh, how many children do you have? Two. Number three? Two. Number two? Two. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> well, did you have TV cameras cover this, uh, I mean approximately right after it happened did you have coverage on the spot number two sometime after number three did you have coverage on this Ed Morrow yes person to person was out there mm -hmm. number one yes uh, well did uh, number one did either you or any of your family experience any of this strange phenomena you know like floating or blowing your top or no number three no no, no. number two no kitty number one where was your son when the sugar bowl fell off the table or left the table, should I say? I believe he was in the dining room. He was in the dining room. 
not in the room where it fell, where this where it moved from. Yes, in the room where it moved from. Number two, um, did you have your house checked with radar and Geiger counters and airplane vibrations? Yes, we had it checked uh, every conceivable way you might imagine. RCA was there. Uh, we had uh, <coughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Number three. Thank you very much, Kitty. Uh, what was the fellow from Duke University's name? Oh, Dr. Pratt came up. Dr. Pratt. Number Hi, Gardner. Number two, since all of these things have been uh, kicking around in your house, are you able to get insurance or do you fly now and pay later? What's the... <laughs> no, our insurance is still in order. Still in order. Yes. Uh, number, number three, uh, you said you had a visit from Duke University. Where is Duke University located? I'm down in Durham, North Carolina. Uh -huh. Number two, uh, who on CBS is doing publicity for the show on the 29th? Uh, Bob Wallace. Yeah, who is doing it, number one? I don't know. Number three? No, I don't know. Uh, number two, uh, you undoubtedly have become involved in stories about poltergeists. There's a Broadway columnist who uh, wrote a book about them. Have you read it by any chance? No, I haven't. Have you, number three? No. Number one? No. Uh, and on that note, we have to call time again on this round, meaning, of course, it's time to mark your ballot. So will you please do so and vote for, as usual, number one, number two, or number three? Oh, yeah. You said already, Polly? Mm -hmm. For whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one. And uh, I don't know why, excepting that he's very quiet. And I keep getting letters from people saying I should vote for the quiet one because he's always the one. So I'll try it once. Oh, okay. Bob Sterling, your vote is. I voted for number two because I thought High's questions were very informative. And Kitty? Well, I voted for number two because I think the house was two-story, and I know there was a basement. And hot. Well, I voted for number two because he had the nerve on CBS to mention NBC. <laughs> oh, no, no, you misunderstood. This was a carryover from the earlier round. He said RCA. That's the Raytheon Corporation of America. Oh, I forget. <laughs> no. Anyway, anyway, yes, I did I... vote for Channel 2. <laughs> <laughs> vote for Channel 2, good man. Okay, there we have it, the way we voted, and we hope you're voting along with us, and you'll find out now, as will we, how right or wrong we are as we discover which one of these gentlemen was the master of the house of flying objects, Mr. James M. Herman. So may I ask Mr. Herman to please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Number two, would you tell us who you really are? You've got all the votes. <laughs> I'm uh, Al Konechny, and I live in Pleasantville. I work with Walt Disney. I'm an artist and a toy designer. <laughs> Probably never designed a poltergeist in your life. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> number three, what about you, sir? Well, my name is Bill Hughes, and uh, I'm employed by the city of New York in the borough of Queens, and I design sewage. <laughs> <laughs> never knew you could be a sewer architect. <laughs> I'm told the city has the faintest idea where all their sewers are. Oh, we do, yeah. You know, you know? in Queens, we do, yeah. <laughs> well, is, is there quite an act to designing one? Oh, yes. Yeah. They have, first of all, they have to be big enough, and most importantly, they have to be cheap enough. Oh, sure. And, uh, are they decorated also? <laughs> never mind. <laughs> well, let's check our store, and as we do, we find that the panel didn't do too well on this, and we fooled you by the same amount. There were three incorrect votes this time at $250 each for a total of $750 from Marlboro. Thanks very much, gentlemen. On your way out, stop pick up your carton of Marlboro. Good night and happy folder, guys. Thank you tonight. I hope you had a good time. I had a wonderful time. And Thank please accept a standing invitation to go back and see us again, will you? Thank you, bud. Thank you like very much. I don't think you should have brought up the fact that he didn't guess any. I think it's right. I think it be He's very hurt. He's been sitting here miserable. <laughs> Please pass him this part in a Marlboro cigarette. Please. That'll make him feel better. Yes, that'll make him feel better. Okay. There you are, dear. And I guess that's it. So good night, panel. Good night, bud. Good night, bud. And now this is Bud Collier saying good night from Marlboro and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Goodson Bill Cotton production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen Town by Wilmot.